everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and I do a lot of diamond painting videos here on my channel. And so if that's something that you enjoy, feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you here. Today I'm here with my weekly Whippin' Chat. If you're new or not sure what that means, WIP stands for Work in Progress. So I'm actually going to be working on one of my diamond painting projects. And chat just means that we're going to chat and catch up a little bit about life and crafting and making videos and all the things. So I'm so glad that you're here. Feel free to work on a project alongside me if you like, or treat this like a podcast, whatever works for you. I am just very sincerely looking forward to spending some time with you today. Let me tell you a little bit about my projects, that, or my project and accessories rather. So I just started this kit the other day. This is Medusa by Chris Abug from Diamond Art Club. This just released uh, a week or two ago and it is, I believe, sold out. It did sell out, I think relatively, no, maybe it took a couple days. Anyway, there is an option to sign up for back in stock notifications on the website and or to add it to your wish list. If this is a kit you think you might want, I recommend doing so because I think they look at those numbers to decide how quickly to push through restocks and stuff. So anyway, um, it is a little bit larger size kit, 55.8 by 85.9 centimeters, um, but it looks like it has some color blocking. So I'm really hoping that it's, you know, not going to be too, too long of a project. Um, as far as accessories go, I have this pen, which is from Lace and Lathe Works. And um, they, you guys, they do really, really budget friendly, but also really beautiful pens. So they do some weekly drops in their Facebook group. And then they also have an Etsy shop that they'll sometimes drop directly to as well. So those will be linked, that'll be linked below along with, excuse me for yawning, all of these other shop links. Man, apparently it's, it's, been, a, it's been a busy weekend. I'll tell you more about it later. That's why I'm yawning. <laughs> the tray is from Dynamite Diamond Shop. And this was a gift from one of my viewers and Patreon members. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And then um, I've used it once before, but I thought that the colors were really appropriate for this kit and I wanted to use it again. I'm gonna be using Patty Wax. This is just the regular formula, not the super sticky. This is gonna be in my single placer. The scent is Vanilla Silk. And then you guys, I just got in, I actually have both here. This is brand new from Diamond Art Club. It just released this past week or two. And I got both to try out. Um, I couldn't resist the this one because it's pink, but I am personally not a florals person at all. And so, But I had heard that it was kind of lightly scented. So I got it, I'm gonna see. But if it's too strong, I'm ditching it because I, I don't do florals. So I went ahead and got, I think this is, yeah, this is unscented. This is called, they call it wax putty. I have heard people, at least what I've seen, it seems like a lot of people are really enjoying it. And you guys know, I have to try out new things here. I gotta test things out and see what I think of them and try to give you guys a good sense for, okay, here's what my thoughts are and you know what, what my experience is like. This particular minder is actually, it came in not this toolkit, but it came in one of my Diamond Art Club kit toolkits. And I just, there was something about it that I thought perfectly suited this kit. So even though I don't, I try to usually reach for um, small shop accessories. This one just, it, it kept catching my eye and it was nearby. So I have this. Um, that being said, let me go ahead and get my pen loaded up and ready to go here. Get some new putty and fresh wax. Cause I think I've used, oh no, you guys, I've no, I haven't used this one before at all. That pen, that tip is totally clean. Okay, we get a fresh start with this pen as well. I'd gotten it a while back, but it was at the same time as I'd gotten a number of other pens in. And um, let me see if this is a smart way to do this. And you know, when I do a small shop haul video, which is where I do a bunch of unboxings from a bunch of different, not wash tapes, about dead, okay. I do a bunch of different unboxings from a bunch of different small shops in the community um, and do them all in one video together. I love those videos. And um, uh, so one of those, I had like, I think six or seven pens. And in that case, I don't always get to show them to you guys in upcoming videos because, you know, pens, I typically only use one per whip and chat. But anyway, that was kind of a random tangent. Um, so I'm going to pull out this old putty, which doesn't look like it has actually been in there that long, but that's okay. I'll try to give us a really fresh start here to try out this new Diamond Art Club wax putty. As I feel like they kind of marketed it as, am I misremembering? Did they just really market it as putty when they announced it? 
or do they say wax putty? I, I don't remember. It looks like more of a putty than a wax, but I, I'm so curious. Have you guys gotten it and tried it yourselves? What has been your impression so far? Um, anyway, it's currently Sunday evening. Um, we've had a very full weekend in a good way. And um, as always, I'm happy to be here at the end of the weekend to kind of decompress and and catch up and chat with you guys. Um, I hope that you're doing well, but yes, hi, how are you? I, um, let me fix something real quick. Okay. Um, ooh, I think I might have already gotten a little bit of a whiff. Let's see. That is a lot of putty. You can see the sparkle there a little bit too. Mmm. I don't know, you guys. I think I'm gonna have to go with the unscented. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to the unscented. Um, it's not heavily fragranced. It's just I am very, very sensitive to scents. You know, I'll figure it out later. Um, it's very, very lightly scented though. So I think it really just depends on how sensitive you are to scents in particular and if you care for florals. Um, that sparkly pink is really pretty, <laughs> but maybe next time. Maybe next time. Maybe they'll release more scents at some point, and maybe there'll be something that's more up my alley. So we'll go with good old unscented. I actually, I really, really appreciate that they did offer, they did decide to offer an unscented option. That is incredibly, incredibly thoughtful. <laughs> um, I like that a lot of shops do that because it's even sometimes it's not even necessarily scent um, sensitivity. Sometimes it's a straight up scent allergy, so. That's an interesting texture. Oh, I was gonna say, oh, is this really soft? But it's like not your typical um, putty texture either. It reminds me, it's got like a little bit of, I almost felt like it had a little bit of grit to it, like in a good way. I am so intrigued, you guys. Okay, do I feel like, like I'm trying to think of what this reminds me of. You guys kind of see how it's got like a little bit of almost texture to it. What does this remind me of? Almost like poster putty, but not like blue tack. I don't know. I'm so, I'm so curious. Okay. Um, okay. That's a lot. They give you a ton. Jeez. Um, did I order these? I ordered these with a kit, I think. Um, this would be one of those things that like a lot of their accessories is really good to like add on alongside a, like one kit. It's like, if you only really want to buy one kit, but you really want to get to that free th shipping threshold because who doesn't want to get to the free sh shipping threshold, you can add on an accessory like this one. So um, anyway, let me know what you are working on yourself as we are chatting today. I started this kit, like I mentioned, just a few days ago and it's been a busy few days and I haven't managed to get terribly far just yet, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I was really, really torn, you guys, which, oh, side note, I am ignoring the perforations. This does come with the new perforated plastic cover. Um, I am really curious about what the actual sort of general consensus is. I feel like what I see in groups is a lot of people saying how much they love the perforated plastic cover. Um, and I don't know how much of it is like, well, how many people actually worked on kits with a perforated plastic cover? Um, <clears throat> am I in the minority and that I don't personally really care for it because I don't, I don't know if it's like, I don't like being told what to do, <laughs> but more so I think it's just that I really like to measure out my canvas into, um, equal size sections throughout the whole canvas. And, um, I like to determine what size my sections are based on, um, just sort of how complex the canvas is. Like if there's a lot of color blocking, I might go with a slightly larger section. If there's a lot of confetti, I might wanna go with a slightly smaller section. If it's round drills, I might go with a slightly bigger section, square drills, vice versa. So I just, I really like to customize it to what I prefer to work on. I'm a little bit nervous for um, 
I'm hearing that they're kind of testing out because one of the complaints from people that do use and like it is that they have a hard time seeing um, the dotted, the, the, the perforation itself, especially when they're diamond painting. And so Diamond Art Club is looking at adding um, like a dotted, some kind of dotted line to it. And I'm really nervous about that because I think that just aesthetically, I... I don't know. I'm afraid that it's really going to be distracting on the image itself, but I, you know, I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to wait and see. And I know that they are receptive to feedback. So if there's a lot of people that dislike it, then maybe they'll, they'll hear that. Um, but we'll just, we'll see. I appreciate that they're always trying to innovate and I'm okay with saying that, you know, I might really very well be in the minority here in terms of how I like to diamond paint and set up my my sections and stuff because I know that I am particular. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I had a, quite a lot of decision paralysis on what kit to work on. Um, I knew that I wanted to work on a Chris Bug kit after I finished my last kit, which was a Butterfly Mermaid from Shimmery Canvases. I think I worked on that with you guys last week, right? Um, that is complete. And I am gonna try to have a post review for you guys on that soon. Um, my overall experience with it was positive, though I did, like I mentioned in last week's open chat, have a little bit of gapping um, that that made things a little bit tricky. So, um, but yes, I finished up that kit and it was just a couple of days into April and I thought, okay, I want to go ahead and start on a Chris Bug kit and it would be really great if there was a Chris Bug kit that also worked for Halfway to Halloween. I really had thought that I was going to work on this kit called Feline Familiars, which I think was one of the first Chris Bug kits that Diamond Art Club released quite a while back, I think. But it, like it's um it's it's really cute and it's small. It's like 50 something by 50 something centimeters. I small being a relative term, of course. Um and it's of a cute like little witch girl and she has two cats like one like in her arms and on her shoulders. It's very, very cute. Um, but for some reason that image, I think partly the colors and, and just something about it, I wasn't totally feeling it right now. I'm sure I'll work on it another time, but for some reason I just wasn't totally feeling it right now. And then I had narrowed it down to either this kit or another kit by Chris Abug called Freya. Freya is very different from this image. It was a Black Friday release. It has, um, well, the Norse goddess Freya, and it is, has round diamonds, lots of pale pastel colors, and is smaller. It's like 40 by 60 something. Um, and here's just where I kept getting stuck is that this kit, Medusa, the image was really strongly calling to me. It had just arrived like the day I finished Butterfly. I almost said Butterfly Dragon. No, Butterfly Mermaid. Um, it arrived that like same day, basically, or the day before. And just the image just kept staring at me. Um, but then I was like, but do I really want to take on a big project like that because I just, I feel like I had a lot of different things I wanted to work on this month. I know I'm going to work on a dragon kit, of course. I want to make sure I have time for that. Um, I, I wasn't sure if this kit would qualify for halfway to Halloween, which I did end up like the event host basically were like, yeah, no, it's, it's Medusa. Like that'll work um, for the halfway to Halloween event, which is happening on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, it's just a diamond paint along. It's not really an event. Um, it's just so like, Hey, here's an excuse to work on like some of your Halloween kits. Cause we're halfway to Halloween. And why should you be restricted to just working on Halloween kits in like September and October? Um, but yeah, it's like, I wanted to do all these events in particular. And yeah, so I just, I kept making like lists of my pros and my cons and what do I want to do? And then I even asked like my husband, his thoughts, honestly, where I was like, what artwork do you like? He thought the Medusa artwork was pretty cool. So anyway, anyway, this is, this is what I landed on and I started kidding it up and I was like, okay, yeah, this is going to be cool. <laughs> um, and it is fun to work on a new release too. And I love Chris Bug's artwork so much. I knew that I wanted to have this excuse to work on one of her kits. So are any of you guys doing the Chris Bug along? Um, or I know the Dakota Dightweiler event is also happening this month and it is really tempting to try to pull out like Pegasus Constellation or something to work on. 
but I just, I don't know if I have that level of confetti in me right now. <laughs> maybe next year, maybe the next event. Is it, ever, is it just annual or is, do they do it like every six months? I can't totally remember. Anyway, so, um, I, um, oh shoot, popping drills. This drill field is, is tight. Um, that's coming together though. That's okay. So anyway, yeah, I've done some things this month. I, um, I don't know how fast I'm going to be diamond painting this, this month though. And so that makes it a little hard to kind of plan out. Okay. What kids do I want to work on? <laughs> how many do I think I'm actually going to fit in? Um, just kind of going to keep things flexible, keep things flexible. Um, so yeah, my thoughts on the, on the uh, butterfly mermaid kit, it was really, really fun to get to work on a, another kit from a new to me shop. And I'm sure, I don't know if I'll work on a kit from a new to me shop this month, um, or a small shop of some sort necessarily. I mean, I guess it did just finish butterfly mermaid and that is kind of part of this month. So, um, there is that, but you know, hopefully, hopefully next month. <laughs> um, okay. I'm back. So, um, where we left off. Okay. I was kind of done with that part anyway. So I, last week I, because I filmed the day before, I guess it just wasn't totally on my brain, but April 1st, did I mention this last week? I might have, uh, was my diamond painting anniversary. I started diamond painting on April 4th, 2020 and four years of diamond painting. It is, I was just talking with, um, uh, the friend that I share a diamond painting anniversary with to the day, Jacqueline, and we were talking um, just about how wild it is that it's been four years and just sort of what things were like, like when we started diamond painting, um, what led us to the craft in general, and uh, even just like it has me feeling very reflective about kind of the, the very real and major impact it's had on my life. Um, just it's it's had a really positive impact on my mental health i have met some people who have become very very dear and very very real friends um that just that mean the world to me and i continue to meet new people in the community all the time and i i just i love that it's continued to grow and expand as more people discover uh discover diamond painting and i really feel like there was so much about diamond painting that was um, just a lifesaver during the absolute craziness that was 2020. Um, it was, you know, I feel like when you, when you talk, I don't know if you're like me, when you're kind of giving like the sales pitch for diamond painting or when people ask like, why do you do this craft? It seems like it's so boring. You would just sit there and you're just placing these like tiny stones on <laughs> glue. And it's just, it seems like that's so tedious, so boring. Um, my response when I, you know, hear that is really just a, yeah, it's okay. Like if you don't get it, you either do or you don't, it's, it's either for you or it's not. And that's completely fine. Um, I totally understand that this is, this would seem very tedious and how in the world is this something that, that brings you joy and isn't incredibly boring. Um, and, or a lot of people say, what do you do with all of them? Do you just have a bunch of them hanging in your home? And I go, no, I have, I have one hanging out my home and in my home. And it only that because it was part of a, a collab that I did with Joe hands like a while back, um, that was basically testing and, um, demoing like the framing offerings that they have when it came to diamond painting and how nice that could look. So, um, anyway, I, yeah, no, I'm like, no, that's, that's not why I do it. I don't do it to hang in my home at all it's actually really quite not my personal decor style. If I had a craft room, absolutely. But sort of overall kind of family areas and stuff. It's, it's, yeah, it's not quite the aesthetic that I, I tend to gravitate towards. Um, absolutely no, no shame if you do. Part of it is because the subject matter of what I tend to diamond paint is more heavy on kind of the fantasy things. If I did more like landscapes or something, then maybe that would be, something I display and ironically enough, the one that is displayed in my home, uh, was landscape ish. It was one of the first diamond dots square drill kits that was released. It's called I think, mighty river and yeah, it's kind of landscape esque, <laughs> but, 
um, yeah, I don't know. So that's it's I and then I just talk about what was I where's going with this? Oh, when I think about sort of the reasons that I tell people about why I diamond paint, it does have to do with just sort of how relaxing it is in terms of it just kind of lets me turn my mind off a little bit. There's something about um for me at least and I know for many others that it's almost like having something really repetitive and relaxing to do. Uh, and mindless, honestly, to do with your hands, it, it frees up my brain to sort of do other things. Um, it's There's something about just kind of keeping your hands busy. There's a lot about it that you, I think, could call a, if we're talking about kind of neuro uh, divergent kind of traits, there's a lot about diamond painting that you could really say is what's called a stim, which is there's something that's stimulating in kind of a sensory sensory way about it like I think visually just sort of the satisfaction of, of laying things out and seeing them come together um, even like the sound um, the sounds of diamond painting that are really kind of repetitive and soothing in a way um, I was gonna say like what are the different senses please I'm like thinking taste how would taste apply please please don't like the glue on your canvases please don't eat your putty or wax. Um, but no, there's just, there's a lot about it that I feel like is a good, like a good, a good stim. Um, and is, it helps with like kind of regulating too, um, emotionally and I think sensory wise. So there's just, there's a lot about it that I found is really beneficial um, and that I, I really enjoy. And I think that another reason I, I really did get into diamond painting is because it was a way for me to not only have something to do when we were stuck at home for so long, but also it let me connect with a whole new community of people in a time where we weren't seeing people in person, but we could connect via shared interests with other people online. And... It was, I don't know, something I feel like I just kind of dove head first into. And, you know, if you remember, when did you start diamond painting? And what was, what was the thing that kind of drew you to the craft or introduced you to the craft? I was really delighted this past Christmas, actually, shortly after Christmas. Um, it seems like a lot of people, they must have gotten diamond paintings for Christmas or something like that. Um, and... And I feel like there were there were a lot of new faces that joined around then. And so if you're one of those, I'm so glad you're here. And I love that there was, you know, something about Christmas and that timing that, that worked out for that. But I do know that there are a lot of us that are kind of pandemic crafters. There are also a lot of people that um, started then and, you know, have kind of faded away and moved on to the next hobby. And you know what? It used to be that way for me. I would have the best of intentions about getting really into a new hobby or a new thing. And what would happen is I'd really want to buy all the accessories and things related to the thing. But then when it came to actually doing the thing, whether it was getting into planners, getting into bullet journaling, um, getting into like cross stitch, I tried to get into that again. And that just takes a little bit more time. Um, and it takes a little bit more brain power for me than I think I'm looking for in a craft like diamond painting it just scratches a different itch I think uh, anyway I just could lose oh I was saying I lost my train of thought but no I picked it right back up um it's um and then I lost it again no okay I used to I used to want to dive right into trying a new craft or and sometimes I would sometimes it would stick but usually not for a very long at all I don't think I've ever picked up something that has lasted this long and that felt like it as soon as I started like as soon as I did my first kit there was the sense of okay this is it this is kind of what I've been looking for this whole time it ticks all the boxes it's really easy to kind of like set up and tear down it has really cute and fun and collectible accessories that can go with it so it scratches that fun itch too um there's a lot of subject matter in this craft that is right in my wheelhouse as well. Lots of fantasy things, and you guys know how much I adore dragon themes and things. So um, it really did. It just it it felt like just the perfect combination of all the things I had been really looking for. Um, 
And I just, this is going to sound incredibly cheesy and I will own that, but I just feel like diamond painting has had such a wonderfully positive impact on my life. And I love that I have this channel in this space where I get to hopefully share some of that with you guys and um, make it easier for others to also find the joy and the love of the craft and um oh, I love it I love it so not me getting sentimental but there's something about you know anniversaries and other dates and sort of things that really brings that out in me where I'm like oh <laughs> so don't mind me um but yeah so four years I think okay how many diamond paintings have I completed in four years I think so the butterfly mermaid would not count, which I think means my grand total is 158 in four years. So technically that means my stash does not yet exceed my life expectancy. <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself. Um, and I also, especially um, the first, how many kits did I single place? I was just talking about this earlier. Um, with, with some others but about how the third kit that I ever worked on which I apologize if you know you've been around for a while and you've heard all this before but the the first two kits I worked on were unlicensed um Amazon kits because that's what we did <laughs> that's what I feel like a lot of us do when there's something there's something new and especially that was during like lockdown and stuff and that was when Amazon wasn't able to fulfill things in two days it was just sort of the wild west. It was you placed an order and you got it when you got it. And who knew when that was going to be? Um, so yes, I was a couple of unlicensed Amazon kits. And then my third kit was from Diamond Art Club. And it was the one worth melting for um, Mandy Manzano panel. And that's Anna, uh, by the way. <laughs> and, um, and I single placed that entire panel which is kind of wild to me. Uh, it took me a month to complete because I finished it. I think, I think I finished, I started it well sometime in April and then finished it. I think the day before or on my oldest's birthday in May, I, I, that just that sticks out to me specifically. And I'm sure I have that in my logbook as well, but, um, yeah, so I single placed that whole thing and I just know like if I had multi-placed that whole thing, then it obviously would have gone a lot quicker. And so I think, oh, if I'd been multi-placing from day one, just, I wonder what my actual <laughs> pace of diamond painting is. But anyway, so four years of diamond painting, fun to see kind of how far I've come. My tastes have changed in a lot of ways, but a lot, but in a lot of ways, they're still, they're still the same. A lot of the things are still true now that were true then as far as still love those dragons. I almost said dinosaurs. No, <laughs> not dinosaurs. <laughs> still have dragons and fantasy um still you know love collecting pretty accessories and all the things and still love being a part of this this diamond painting crafting community so anyway thanks for letting me wax nostalgic there a bit um but yeah happy diamond painting anniversary to anyone else that was a pandemic crafter and is celebrating four years too um, I'm curious how diamond painting has affected your life or even if it hasn't, if you're like, nah, it's just a craft I do from time to time. And sometimes I catch videos. That's, that's also, that's completely fine. <laughs> Whatever purpose it serves for you is, is great. Um, and obviously like having like how diamond painting led me to something that I never, ever, ever expected in a million trillion years that I would do, which is to start a YouTube channel. Um, and the incredible like blessing this has been in my life is, and just how it's let me sort of tap into, um, I don't know, a part of my brain that like, it isn't like my identity isn't in being a mom because I am otherwise a stay at home mom. Uh, it's my two boys with, with special needs. And I love that this is something that I get to do where I get to, like I get to like teach, I get to chat and interact and, and hopefully be helpful. And I get to do it while also doing something that I adore and would still be doing anyway. Um, it just, I feel incredibly thankful 
incredibly grateful and I really appreciate you guys for being being a part of that so you thought I was done being sappy you know I went I went there again but I just wanted to acknowledge the impact that diamond painting really has has had on my life including how it led me to starting this channel and this community that is that has come to where it is now I started my YouTube channel in it was August or September so it was a little ways after I started diamond painting but it's funny because in retrospect I look back and I was like I have been diamond painting for all of, I think around six months. I've been diamond painting for around six months. And there's part of me that goes, why did I think I had any business starting a YouTube channel and trying to tell people like what to do and how to diamond paint? Like, dang, that was pretentious. <laughs> like I've been diamond painting for six months. There have been people that have diamond painting for years. Um, but I think I, I more started that channel just because I thought, oh, I see that there are these different like companies out there that I, you know, I feel like I want to put out some reviews of their kits that'll hopefully be helpful for people. And that was where I think it came from, but it's just funny kind of looking back and going, wow, okay. 2020 Kitty needed to slow her roll, <laughs> but no, I'm glad, I guess I'm glad it didn't cause in a way, cause at least it, it brought us here. Okay. Anyway, um, other things that I've been up to. Oh, so Summer with a Master's announcement went up today. It's Sunday uh, currently. And um, I'm excited to have that announcement officially out there. Um, it took a little bit longer than we had been intending. By we, I mean my co-host, Anthony, single and placing and I. It took a little longer than I ha It's on me, though, <laughs> because I just had a really, really busy month and I kept kind of going back and forth on if um, I wanted to suggest kind of changing some things and making things a little more streamlined and manageable and that is kind of what we ended up doing um, I don't know if you guys if you're interested in joining in on the event you may have already watched that video but in short we are um, streamlining a bit the number of videos that they're gonna be um, there's still gonna be and also there's still gonna be prizes but um, we're doing just gift cards this year and I haven't gotten any negative feedback on that, but I admit I was, I was nervous to come to you guys with these changes in general because we haven't made changes quite this, I don't know, these feel like bigger changes to me since the event started and this is its fourth year. Um, but cutting down the number of videos and shifting what the prizes look like and stuff. I just, I didn't know. I didn't know if that was gonna bother people or rub people the wrong way or if they'd have, you know, if any guys would have an issue with that. And um, so I, I, it's, I'm hopeful, maybe this means, at least as of the time of this posting, I haven't gotten any um, people that are upset or, you know, don't like it so far. Um, but if you have concerns or something, please know you're welcome to, to reach out and let me know. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's so the, as far as the dates and everything go, it's still going to be June 1st to July 31st. And um, we still will have plenty of giveaways. We're just, by streamlining the number of videos, it'll really, I think, help both of us. And um, yeah, so... Um, I am still debating. I need to make a decision ASAP though, because I need to get this order placed if it's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm still torn on if I want to order a custom this year. There's part of me that goes, I just, I don't know that I can take on like a big custom kit. I know I could order a custom of something smaller, um, but I just, I really loved it up till this point, uh, for the past three years, the first three years of Summer with a Masters, each year I did a different custom of a John William Waterhouse piece. And I just, those tend to be bigger confetti heavy kits. And yeah, I don't know. I'm torn. I'm really torn. I've thought about trying to do maybe a crop of a John William Waterhouse piece. Cause that would be kind of an interesting thing to try doing and talk you guys through my thought process with that. Um, because if you, yeah, if you didn't know, that's something that you can totally do. And I feel like that makes a lot of these giant old master's kits feel a lot more manageable and accessible. Um, is yeah, you don't have to work on the full image if you don't want to. You could do a crop of that image. You don't have to get the artist's permission because they're old master's artwork. They're in the public domain. You can really kind of do whatever you'd like as far as 
yeah, cropping and, and whatnot. So I might think about that if that sounds like something you guys might be interested in, just sort of how to decide what kind of crop to do, what would look good, what kind of elements would be good to focus on, how to kind of frame it in a way that works. I mean, you don't have to be that particular about it, but if you still, if you wanted to, maybe, maybe that's something I could dive into a little bit with you. I know that Jada Gem Shop, for example, um, she could totally make recommendations for you. I know that a lot of the kits that Jada Gem Shop offers, even not old masters kits, um, she al almost always, I feel like offers kits in crops. Like there's options with the full image and image and options with them as cropped, various cropped in elements. Um, and then you can have like a smaller size kit too and get good detail on whatever you've cropped in on. So yeah, I don't know. But I have some like pre-cat packaged kits for sure in my stash that I am pretty sure I want to try to work on this year. So um, yeah, yeah, I'd be curious if you guys are planning to join in on the event. No hard feelings if you're not. I know that the genre of artwork is not for everyone and even just events especially given kind of what I feel like we've we've talked about together in some of these recent videos that maybe you're just you're not in the place where you want to be doing events right now and that's also completely fine um but I'm looking forward to working on and sharing sharing some event projects with you and um by the way before anyone asks <laughs> I, have I gotten this question yet I think I did I think at the beginning of the year there was a post in diamonds and emeralds um about it diamonds and emeralds by the way in case you didn't know, is a Facebook group that I own and run with my friend Lindsay from Emeralds and Fairy Lights and have just the best team of moderators that help make that group happen because um, it's it takes a village. <laughs> it's it's great. It's a really, a really fun community. But um, yeah, I think someone posted in there asking about it. But uh, yes, Drills and Chills will be happening again this year. I am not sure when I'll have an official announcement out yet, but um, in case you were curious, it absolutely is going to be happening again. Um, that feels like that's a that's a staple. That's a must. <laughs> It'll it, that'll definitely be happening. So, um, as far as what exactly it's going to look like, I mean, I think the dates and the themes are going to stay the same, but um, other details are TBD. But that's I think all that I have for you as far as event stuff goes. Um, I am curious if any of you guys have picked up any new releases from various shops recently. There have been some really great ones. Um, it's, yeah, there's so many. <laughs> I'm afraid to like start mentioning some because I'm afraid that I'll forget some. Um, I know Jada Gem, there's shops that have their weekly releases. Like Jada Gem Shop does releases on Thursdays. Diamond Art Club, of course, has their Saturday releases and occasional midweek releases. Um, Diamond Delights just did a restock of some of their cute like little sticker packs and stuff. And there's tons of other shops too. Um, Enablers Outpost, I think that they're starting their... Um, year of the dragon like their dragon seasons diamond paint along event here um which is the, i still need to unbox that for you guys but it's this amazing giant canvas that emma casey the artist did um for enablers outpost and it's oh my gosh it's so cool you guys but um as far as recent new releases that i've picked up i was so happy and I, I like I wasn't expecting it and so it, it took me by surprise in a really good way and maybe an emotional in a way that I wasn't expecting but Diamond Art Club releasing those um two autism they, they said autism awareness month or so my autism awareness or autism acceptance month um two canvases for that and I was very very touched I was really I really loved one of the images in particular. I did pick, pick that up and it just got delivered today. And the way that I almost turned this whip and chat into a kit up and chat for that particular kit. So tempting. I may, I may still try to squeeze it in sometime this month. I, I don't know if I'll quite have the time. I don't want to rush a kit like that, but um, I really appreciated that last year, um, I think last year, I don't know if they, if they had 
any new releases that were autism awareness slash acceptance themed autism month um but they had promoted an existing kit that they have the existing kit that they have is it uses some puzzle piece imagery though and um i'm absolutely not at all attacking you or saying that this you know you're a bad person or that you should have known this or anything like that but um the puzzle piece imagery and the organization organization that most people associate with sort of autism awareness and support is autism speaks and both that organization and the puzzle piece imagery are in a lot of spaces thought of as a little bit problematic there's i mean you could look it up if you would like to i would give a little bit of a trigger warning there there have just been some as far as the organization itself goes there have been a couple of just kind of problematic things that they have done um and it's a little bit the mentality that they have towards autism is very much like it's this horrible disease that is i don't know that needs like a cure or something like that and um and puzzle piece imagery i know a lot of um a lot of people that are autistic um they they're like i'm not missing a part of me there's not there's not a missing piece to me um yeah so it's it's interesting it's something that i've been learning a lot about um especially as uh, i'm trying to think like how how deep do i want to go here um i've talked about how my kiddos are both autistic and and yes i do say they are autistic versus they have autism because it's a sense of like it's not again it's not a disease it's a it's a difference in kind of how their their brains work um and in this case this is one of those instances where sort of the autistic community not everyone necessarily but it seems like a lot have said that they prefer um not using person first language not person with autism but like autistic anyway so my kids are I am. I actually am coming up on one year since I got my diagnosis officially. Um, and I may talk, I'll probably talk about the, <laughs> the trail just went flying. I might talk about it in more detail in like a future video. <laughs> I know I'm already kind of going into more detail here, but um, I can talk more just sort of about what that process was like and what it's been like to sort of be on that journey, especially in the years since getting that diagnosis and whatnot. But anyway, um, I feel like I've just been learning a lot over the past several years between my kiddos and how that led to me getting a diagnosis and pursuing one and just trying to be like the best kind of advocate and um, for my kids, not just advocate for them, but just sort of understanding them and understanding how to best meet their needs and be also part of helping the world become a place that is a little bit more friendlier and a little bit more built for people that aren't neurotypical. Um, and I want to be a part of, of that, but in a way that's kind and empathetic and <clears throat> just seeks to really help people sort of understand um, what it's like to walk in someone else's shoes and not saying that like, you're a bad person because you don't understand what it's like for me more just to hey like i i don't know if you you knew but this is this is what this can be like like if you if you were curious but yeah so all this to say um i appreciated that diamond art club listened to a lot of feedback that they were given last year about people saying you know it'd be great if we could see some um autism support autism acceptance or awareness um, images that didn't feature the puzzle piece for those that don't feel that it's a good representation for them or something they want to support or whatnot and this year they did and i love 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 the rainbow infinity symbol is um is kind of typically for neurodivergence in general and then the gold infinity symbol is typically the one that is specific to autism um but that rainbow infinity symbol and there were some gold like laced throughout it too oh my gosh i just i loved it 
I really loved it. And so it made me like a little emotional when I saw it and I did buy it. And I never want sort of my support or interest in these things to be performative at all. Um, it just, there's something that made me go, oh, I feel seen. And that's a really nice feeling. So um, I really, I really appreciated that quite a lot. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's been on my radar for, for new releases recently. As far as non-diamond painting related things, which um, I know we've been chatting about a lot of other things for the moment and they're not too, too far from the end of the whip and chat, but um, it was a busy weekend. Adam's birthday was a couple of days ago and last night we went to an angels game Adam and my oldest son and I went with a bunch of Adam's friends Adam's dad stay, uh, came over and watched Micah and um, Connor my oldest and I got to obviously we sat next to each other and Adam was kind of mingling and going between his different friends and us uh, Connor just had so much fun um, it was fun to you know, try to help him continue to <laughs> grasp and understand different things about baseball. I mean, this is opening week. And so the last time he was a baseball game, he was, that was six, nine months ago. So it's been a while. And so I was kind of re-explaining some of the rules to him and he was really into it. Angels ended up winning and he thought that was great. And it was Saturday, a Saturday night game, which they do fireworks after Saturday night games. And so we stayed for that. It was a ton of fun and I loved getting to go and experience that with Connor because typically like when Adam is, when Connor's been to games, it's just been Adam takes him and I stay back with Micah, which is, um, just the practical thing. And hopefully Micah will be old enough soon to, um, enjoy coming to a baseball game and sitting, but that's a long time for a kiddo to sit, especially, uh, him and though he did just turn six which that is still wild to me that I that that my baby is six years old um and yeah so we also have had some birthday celebrations this weekend for not just Adam but also for Micah and for one of my nephews today we had a really fun belated Easter and combo birthday celebration <laughs> celebrated three birthdays and Easter today with um, Adam's family and we had an Easter egg hunt. We arranged for the Easter bunny to come and visit us a week late. It was great. The boys had the best time. Um, and now we have a whole bunch of candy in our house again. <laughs> it's just great. Oh, we're just gonna be on a sugar, sugar high for a little while. We're just gonna try to spread this out as long as possible, kiddos. Um, and yeah, so we actually hosted though, uh, the kind of celebrations at our place, I'll feel a lot more, I feel like I feel a lot more comfortable hosting once I have my, um, kitchen cabinets back, which fingers crossed, I mean, we're only missing two of them, not like the whole kitchen, but, uh, fingers crossed that everything is still going to work out for the guy that we currently have lined up to come out in a few weeks, a couple weeks now. Um, but yeah, I feel like it'll be a little easier. Like I'll feel a little bit more at ease uh, personally. Um, everyone was very sweet, very gracious. And we had brunch and, um, and then had cupcakes and cake. And it was a lot of fun. It was a good, it was a good get together and celebration. Um, and it really was nice to kind of cap off the, the kids being on spring break this week. Though um, it was a little, for me, a little bit of a preview for, okay, summer's not that far away and this is the taste of what summer break is gonna be like so I'm kind of gearing up um for that a little bit just thinking like okay here's some things that now that I had a little taste of it what are some things I can do to kind of make summer break fun where we don't go too stir crazy at home and where the boys aren't climbing the walls <laughs> figuratively mostly um but yeah, I want to schedule like swim lessons for both of them and maybe like some camp t day camp type things for my oldest. And I think I still have summer school for part of the summer, but um, it's not the whole summer. It's like just over half of it, I think. But yeah, it's hard to believe that that's around the corner. Summer break. Who knew? Um, but yeah, so that's happening. And then tomorrow, um, which is today... 
I have what should be my last dentist appointment um, to take care of the various things that I've had going on with my teeth. This one should just be one filling on one tooth. It's just the last kind of quadrant in my mouth, but it should be hopefully small and easy to take care of. Um, knock on wood. But the other like sensitivities and issues I've had going on that I was really worried about last week, those mostly seem to have eased up and kind of gradually been getting better. So I think it was just kind of a no, my my gums and my teeth are angry with me. Uh, so no, all seems to be okay for the moment, but I'll be glad to go and kind of check in, make sure they, can, they look and see that everything is still looking good and then take care of this last, last feeling. I'll be so glad to have that done. And you guys, I am being so consistent about brush and then floss and then do the fluoride toothpaste after the floss. Um, it's like a prescription strength fluoride toothpaste. Um, and just hopefully this will really help keep things under control. I hate dentist stuff, you guys. It's just like my least favorite, my least favorite thing. The next thing I have to do, because I was really realizing this at the game for some reason, like I just am realizing that I absolutely am having a hard time with, um, with seeing at distances, like things that I know I used to be able to see clearly are just a little bit blurrier. And so I need to schedule a check-in with the optometrist. And I'm like, well, I may have made it to age 35 with no corrective lenses or anything whatsoever. I would probably have to blame diamond painting a bit for um, probably finally doing <laughs> doing the number on my vision that's gonna need, I I'm guessing that I'm gonna need some kind of corrective lenses. And I'm, I'm really torn because I don't think I want to go to wearing glasses every day because I don't really like the way that I look wearing glasses. I know that's probably really shallow, but I just, I just don't. Um, but I also really dread the thought of taking contacts in and out of my eyes. Um, and I'm afraid that they're really gonna bother me because I am highly, highly sensitive. Uh, just, sensory wise to a variety of things. There's a number of things that I can't tolerate because it just doesn't work for me sensory wise. I'm still like, for example, I'm still trying to find kind of like makeup and face products that, that don't make my skin angry. I wore makeup to the game last night. Um, and I try to use like hypoallergenic formulas. I've tried so many different brands of makeup, everything from like you know, drugstore brands that are hypoallergenic to like really expensive, like Sephora brands and whatnot. And it just, it's, it's been difficult to find things that work that don't really irritate my skin. But yeah, I wore makeup to the game and we were, you know, there for several hours when I came home and of course like washed it all off and tried to be really careful with how I was washing it off. And I woke up to like just one of the worst rosacea flare ups that I've had in a long time. My face was just, I was literally putting ice packs on my face. Um, sorry if that's gross, but like I or weird to talk about, but like, I just, I woke up where I just, it was horrible. It was such a bad flare up. So I also need to schedule an appointment with the dermatologist. So all the things to try to take care of my, oh no. <sighs> okay. At least there weren't a ton in there, but I just, there was probably a dozen drills that just went flying. I don't know if any landed in the glue. Hold on. No, none of them landed in the glue. Okay, I'll take it. Um, just a couple to pick up. <laughs> I'm so graceful, you guys. Do what I do. <laughs> but yeah, so things things to take care of. Things to take, uh, things to take care of. Also, by the way, thank you everyone that um, gave me some suggestions for my search for a new logbook brands to check out. Um, some of you sent me even links. And I, you guys are so sweet and so thoughtful. Thank you so much. That was so thoughtful of you guys. Um, I'm still on the hunt. There's a couple, you know, that I'm still kind of saving and looking at. I'm kind of right now waiting to see if either Archer and Olive or Notebook Therapy do restocks um, because they just both are kind of low in stock. Um, and we'll see. I, I still have some time. Um, I have this big Medusa kit that's going to take me a little while to get through. So I, I have some time, but 
uh, yeah, those are kind of the ones I'm eyeing for one of these B5 size logbooks, ideally with either a dot grid or blank pages. Dot grid would be my preference. Blank pages will work okay. And lined paper is not, I, I'm not going to do just like regular kind of straight line paper. Um, because of how I, I do my logbook pages <laughs> and for consistency. But yeah, so, but thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys were so sweet to give suggestions and to try to help me research. So I appreciate you a lot. Um, and then as far as what I've been reading and watching and listening to, I don't know that I have anything super exciting for this, this part of the whip and chat. Um, I do do these little blurbs at the end of each of my whip and chats. Um, a lot of it's really been kind of the same on all fronts. Adam and I um, watched a couple more episodes of Deep Space Nine. Star Trek, for those of you that didn't know. And then I did finish, I got to the season finale of my Supernatural rewatch. I actually have not gone back yet to restart um, from the beginning again, which is usually how it goes, but I probably will at some point here. And then I have been watching a lot of just kind of various like booktube related videos. Um, and that has just been kind of, what my brain's been craving for whatever reason, just sort of listening to people chat about, about books and their thoughts on various books and things that are, are going on. And I've added a couple of books to my, you know, maybe read this when you're back in a more of a reading phase again, uh, kind of thing. But otherwise, yeah, nothing, nothing super exciting for this part, but let me know if you have anything that you're really loving as far as things that you're reading or watching or listening to. As far as what I've got planned for videos for this week, I I had planned on a couple of, of videos last week that didn't happen, including a post review um, and some other things, but then there were a couple of more timing appropriate things that came up, like the Dragons and Beasties anniversary sale that I saw was going on. And so I wanted to get a video up about that is, you know, right away so that you guys could go shop if you wanted. And then um, when Anthony and I decided, okay, let's let's get this Summer with the Masters announcement out, um, I wanted to get that up as quickly as possible. So I'll play a little bit of catch up this week. I have at least one post review I'm going to try to do for you guys. And I am looking at my growing pile of packages from small shops, and I think it might be a good week for a small shop haul. And hopefully this week I will actually get to that poor Enablers Outpost kit that the unboxing of which keeps getting bumped. I'll have a sneak peek for you from Diamond Art Club on Friday as well. So anyway, you guys, thanks so much for spending some time with me today. We got a little bit of a dent done in this section. By the way, we're working down here on this helmet. We've got a couple of these little magic sparkles in the background, but we made some good progress today. So um, I hope you guys are well. If you made it all the way to the end and you aren't too freaked out by snakes, how about a snake emoji? Because we're working on the Medusa kit. If you don't like snakes, which I totally understand, how about, mm, um, we did a blue emoji last time. What could we do? Something that is like a knight emoji. I think there's maybe a sword emoji. There might be like a knight, there might be like a horse emoji or something. Um, anything that makes you think of like a knight for our poor RIP friend that encountered Medusa. So anyway, Thank you guys for spending some time with me today. Feel free to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'd absolutely adore having you here. Have a fantastic week, everyone, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.